Okay, picking up with uh, exercise three, we have a buffered solution of ammonia, which it gives you the KB value, and it gives you ammonium chloride. So, it, again, it tells us it's a buffered solution, but you should be able to recognize weak acid and its salt or weak base and its salt gives you a buffer. It says calculate the pH of this solution. So we're going to use our handy-dandy... Notebook. Um, <laughs> yes, as soon as you find Dora. I thought that was a blues, blues. Yeah, blues Clues. Oh, Blues Clues. Sorry. <laughs> aye, aye. Blues, blues, blues Clues. Uh, Dora was backpack. Looking for, and the map. Yeah. And, yeah. and swiper no swiping. Yes. I <laughs> am. <laughs> okay, so back to this. Okay, that's on there now. Okay. <laughs> so um, we need... <laughs> We need the Ka value, and it gave us the Kb value. So we're going to go over here real quick and get our Kb value. So Kw over Ka. Just kidding. I need Ka. I did that backwards. Oops. Switch your A's and B's. Just start over. Ka is going to be equal to Kw over Kb. Because uh, when you use this equation, it does have to be Ka to get your hydrogen concentration. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 gives me 8 point, just kidding, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Then we put in our concentration of our, in this case, the salt is going to be your acid because it's the conjugate acid of the weak base of C NH3. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Good. I said this is going to be your acid because it, because it is the conjugate acid of NH3. Remember conjugates? Yeah. This is your acid. This is your base over here, so that means that's got to be the conjugate acid. And then the base was 0.25. So we do all that math in our handy-dandy calculators, and we get that it is 8.9 times 10 to the negative 10. So to get the pH, we take the negative log of that number. I don't feel like rewriting it. I need two decimal places in my pH because I have two sig figs up there. So I should get 9.05. So that's before I put anything in it. It's just what I have when I have it sitting there in my little early Meyer flask, so to speak. Okay? So that's the pH before I do anything. So part B wants to know, calculate the pH when 0.10 moles of gaseous HCl is added to a 1 liter solution of the buffer. Okay? So I'm going to go to the next slide if everybody has this. Part B, okay, so I've got to calculate my new concentrations of A and B, okay, so I'm going to start with A, okay, so it was a one liter solution, so that means we have 0.4 moles originally from what they gave us in the problem, right, and then I'm going to, I'm adding acid, so I'm going to add the 0.10 moles to that. Okay, and then it's still a one liter solution because we added gas. So when we divide by one liter, it's going to be 0 0.50 mole of my acid. Now for my base, I'm going to take the 0.25 moles that I started with, and since I'm adding acid, I'm going to subtract. Still one liter. So it should be 0.15. I put moles there. That should be molarity. I'm sorry. My B. Okay. So now to get my hydrogen concentration. You can do this part too with a rice table if you want. But I think this formula is better. But you do remember what I said. This particular formula you will have to memorize because it doesn't give it to you on your uh, AP sheets. So we have our Ka from before, 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. 
time concentration of 0.5 over concentration of 0.15, and I get 1.85 times 10 to the negative 9. Mola. So to get pH, I take the negative log of that, because I don't feel like rewriting it. And I should get, I need still two sig figs, pH is equal to 8.73. Yes? Is that, um, is that like 5.6 times 10 to the negative 15? No, it's a 10. My pen's messed up. Oh, okay. 10. I need, a, I need a better stylus. I hate this. It writes so fat. But I don't want to go get the Apple one. It's too expensive. I'm on a teacher salary here. Okay. So let's go on to exercise four. Any questions? Are you with me so far? If I had added a base, I would have done the opposite. I would have subtracted from the acid and added to the base. Okay? Just vice versa kind of thing. Okay? That takes me to exercise four. A chemist, y'all are baby chemists, uh, needs a solution buffered at pH 4.30 and can choose from the following list of acids and their soluble salts. Calculate the ratio of AB required for each system to yield a pH of 4.3, okay? Um, so something that you should have gotten from the video, and if you didn't, it is very, very important. At your half equivalence point, and that's something you should recognize, so at your half equivalence point, uh, your pH is equal to your pKa, okay? So the best way to pick which one is gonna work is to take the pKa of all of those and see what they turn out to be, okay? Um, and so if you're on the, an AP multiple choice, obviously you don't get to use your calculator. So we're going to kind of ballpark some stuff based on what you know for pHs. I mean, based on what you know on negative logs. So if I take the negative log of something that's a times 10 to the negative 3, your pH is going to be about what? 3-ish. So... It's going to be about 3 if I do that. It actually ends up being 2.86. So that one's not going to work. It's not going to make a good buffer. Because your buffer region is between that half equivalence point, remember. The propanoic acid is going to be, if I just did just the negative 5, it would be a pKa of negative 5. But I got some other numbers in there. So it's going to be around 5. Um, and it actually works out to be 4.89. When you do the actual math, yes. Now, when you take the negative log, remember pKa means negative log of the Ka, just like pH means negative log of the hydrogen. So when you take the negative log, it ends up being that. Yeah, if it's a one times ten to the negative five, it'd be straight up five. But because it's not, it's some other chain. You gotta like it means it's gonna be closer to five than it is four. But you gotta ballpark it, and then um, the benzoic acid. Um, we're getting close to being able to shoot that over to negative 4, right? 6.4, it's closer to negative 4 than negative. So it's, it's going to be 4-ish. It's going to be a little greater than 4 because of this number. Because remember, as you go closer to 10, it would change from 1 to the negative 4. This is math, it's not chemistry. Is it making sense what I'm saying? Because it's making sense in my head, but that doesn't always mean it makes sense when it comes out. That becomes 4.19. It's estimation. Est I'm estimating, yeah. And then, of course, a negative 8, this is going to be mm, 7 to 8 range. So we can, for sure, they didn't even spell hypochlorous right. That can't be right. They didn't spell it right. So those are our two close choices. Which one of those is closest? Which one will we choose for a buffer of 4.3? Benzoic acid, so we're going to go with that. Okay, it says to calculate the AB required for each system, but we're not going to waste our time because we know it's not the other ones aren't going to work. So then we're going to say uh, the H concentration. So we have ten. 
because we're going from pH. So we're looking for approximately a, a range of 5 times 10 to the negative 5, approximately. So we would say, back to this equation, Now plug it all in. Did they give us, oh, they, that was a stupid question. I was like, did they give us a KA? Duh. <laughs> it was a duh. I'm asking if they gave us a KA. It's right there. We just calculated with it. I didn't know either. Okay, then I don't feel so duh <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> So the ratio comes out to 0.78. It doesn't make any So it would be 5 uh, to point, about 6.4 for a buffer. That would be your ratio. I don't know. I wrote that down. Just 0.78 ratio. You could do that, too. But on a test, especially in a multiple choice test, they're more likely to give you this kind of question right here and not make you calculate the ratio. They're going to say which one of these uh, weak acids would make a great buffer system to get if you, and give you a target pH. So you kind of have to, like, estimate your logs. It's doing it again. Yes. How did I find the negative log of what? Oh, I'm looking at the exponents. So if it was 1 times 10 to the negative 5, then it would be, uh, the negative log would be 5, okay? So I compare that, as I start getting like this 6.4, if I get high enough, it's going to go, like if, the closer I get to 10 there, it changes from 1 times 10 to the negative 4, right? So 6.4 is close to 10, so I'm going to be somewhere a little over 4 on my pH or my pKa. That is not, that's not science, that's math. Whereas if I looked this one down here, the 3.5 times 10 to the negative 8, that's going to be somewhere between 7 and 8, okay? Because as I get closer to um, 10, it goes to 7. Does that make sense? That's a like estimating the logs the without being. Did they not make you do that in math? Like, do logs without the calculator? Yeah, they have. They just. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, anytime you have, anytime you see one times ten to the negative whatever, you can happy dance it because that negative log is just the exponent. Okay, but when you have decimals in there or numbers in there, you got to look, is it going to be closer to the negative 5, or as I approach 10, is it going to go to the negative 4? And then, so that means the pH would be lower, the pKa would be lower. Does that make sense? Yes. And I promise you, when we start going through review, and we do review of multiple choice, I walk you through some of that math. You should always expect on the AP exam, that for when you have the multiple choice, you should always expect that math to be fairly easy and fairly straightforward. Or they put it in like those questions where they show you, you just put the setup in and you pick the right setup. They're not going to ask you to do like major, you know, out five decimal places kind of thing. But they, because they're wanting you to just be able to know the theory behind it and ballpark it. So like when we went over the test on all the math questions, that was fairly straightforward, easy math that we looked at, was it not, this last test? It's just that you, it, it really was. I mean, if I can do it, y'all can do it. But the problem is your generation is highly calculator dependent. Highly, highly, highly calculator dependent. Almost yeah. Almost, wait, almost, yeah. All, but almost all math and chemistry is... Okay, so that brings us to acid-base titration curves, which is what you looked at on the notes yesterday while I was gone by Renee McCormick. Okay. So let's do some calculations, and this might help with the yeah. worksheet. Yeah. I just did not have time to record this that night before because I had some stuff happen at home, and, yeah, so I didn't have time. So. The thing I am confused about, how do you know which one is being, like,
you're listening or not. Okay, we're going to go do exercise five. Okay? Exercise five for the titration of 50 mils of uh, 0.2 molar HNO3 with 0.1 molar of NaOH. Calculate the pH. So this is a strong, strong. Okay? So, uh, so before we have added any... Uh, in a uh, sodium hydroxide, pH is just going to be equal to the negative log of the concentration of 0.2 molar. So before we start, our pH is very, very low, 0.699, because we have three sig figs, we need three. Now after we add 10 milliliters, here we go, strong, strong, let's make a rice table. Not hard. Oh, calm down. Okay, so we're starting out. This I'm going to introduce something to you called, because we like the, instead of really, really small numbers, it's better to work with numbers we our brain can understand. If I take 50 milliliters times 0.2, I get something called a millimole. Isn't it cute? Okay. It is supposed to be yield semantics. Okay? So I start out and I have 10 millimoles of when I'm starting, right? It is not made up, I promise. Okay? And before I start, I have this, and I don't care about that because it's liquid water. So there's my, my change is going to be how much... 10 milliliters and that, so what is 10 times 0.1 is 1 millimole. So subtract out the 1 millimole. So what does that leave at the end? Because I'm going to consume, obviously hydroxide is limiting in this case, I'm going to run out. So how much does that leave me of hydrogen concentration? Nine. <laughs> it leaves me nine millimoles. So because you're adding a base to the acid. Mm -hmm. They're going to react and consume to make water, right? Obviously, I'm going to run out of hydroxide. It's limiting, so I, it doesn't matter what its concentration is after I add it because I consumed it. So now I've got to go back and get my hydrogen concentration. Wait, but it's millimeters. I know. That's why it's a millimole. Divided by, what's my new volume here, peeps? 60, 60 milliliters. So that gives me 0.15 molar again. Yay for us. Oh, so the milliliters cancel out. Yeah, that's how you get millimoles. But these are easier math than 1 times 10 to the negative 4 and 3 and blah. So I take the negative log of the 0.15 because I'm lazy. <laughs> Molarity, big M, because that m moles divided by volume gives me molarity. What's the other one? It's moles divided by grams. No, kilograms is solvent. That's molality. But the, that's beyond the scope of the AP program. That's the what? That's beyond the scope of AP. They don't, they don't make you calculate molality, and they don't make you calculate colligative properties, which is why you need uh, freezing point depression and all that. Yes, it was. So now my pH is 0.824, okay, which I would expect that it goes up a little bit. I added some base, okay. So now let's do 20 mils. You try it. Oh, 10 milliliters of base times 0.10 concentration of base gave me one millimole. 10 times 0.1 is one. Of the hydroxide. What? Ten times point ten is one. So what's point ten? Wait. Volume and molarity. So then when you multiply. There's your molarity. There's your volume. Wait, but I think what Muhammad's trying to ask here is why ten times point ten is one. What? <laughs> what? I'm going to move on. 
All right, 20, okay, and this is total. So what's 20 mils times 0.1? Two millimoles, okay? <laughs> Twenty mil. Oops. Twenty milliliters times point ten molar sodium hydroxide is two millimoles. So this time we've added a total of two millimoles. So we're pretty much doing what we did. Mm-hmm. But why are we doing a rice table? Just to, I just wanted you to see how you subtract it. On the next one, I'm just going to say my original ten millimoles. Minus the 2, it gives me 8 millimoles. That's what was confusing. Divided by my new volume, which is 70. 70. Someone's paying attention. And that's going to give me a 0.114 molar. So negative log of 0.114 is going to be 0.942 pH. <laughs> that's my pH. So I'm still going up, which is good because I'm adding acid. Okay. So same thing for the five, the 50 milliliters. Five millimoles. Five millimoles left over, right? And then there's yeah. five millimoles over 100 milliliters. You look at him go. What? You go, Bargish, you go. So what does that give me as my concentration, 0.05? Of hydrogen. So negative log, uh, 0.05 gives me 1.301 pH. Bam! Ready for the next one? Yes. Alex has a question. Yes. So if you see it's a 20, right? And then there's a 10. Where does this 2 come from? You want to play. 20 times 0.1 is... 0.1 molar is in the problem, dear. Say that to Alex. He's the one who's asking. Um, okay, we're moving on. What do you think E is? How many millimoles? Ten. Really? <laughs> no, you're right. And we started with ten millimoles, and we added ten millimoles, so what have we reached? Mm, almost equivalence point. So for a strong acid and a strong base, what is the equivalence point? pH 7. Because you are at the equivalence point. I ran out of room. That's at the equivalence point. Strong, strong gives you 7. Uh, strong acid, strong bases, they don't have Ka and Kb values. That's 100% dissociation. It's a one-to-one -one reaction on okay. the we're creating water. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it creates a neutral salt. So in this case, our neutral salt would have been, what was, I don't even remember what our acid was. It had, okay. Our neutral salt would be sodium nitrate. So it's because it completely dissociates. Completely dissociate. Strong is completely dissociate. So now we need to do, if I added 200 mils, so I way overshot my end point here. It is like not even pink anymore. It's like. You get a negative number? No, you don't get a negative number. But let's go back and put our rice table in there so it makes sense again. Right? So we have our OH and then we have our water. So this time we have 10 millimoles, but we've added 200, so we've added a total of 20 millimoles. So when we. This is going to be. This is going to be zero because we're run out. So we're going to have. That's going to react. So we're going to have 10 millimoles of hydroxide left over. Right? Yes. Okay. So our new volume. Can you see that? I can change it. Yeah, so I'm going to go over here. So then we're going to go 10 millimoles of hydroxide over, what did you say, Bargish? 250. That's 350. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I thought the normal way to say it is 250. But I'm saying 250. Okay? So then that gives me 0.04. And I'm running out of room, so I'm going to have to erase for a second. So I have 0.04 molar of hydroxide. So I'm going to, I'm going to take my pOH of the 0.04. 
Well, I didn't do negative log. Sorry, I forgot to write that in there. Oops, that goes there. Okay, that's going to give me a pOH of 1.39. So then my final pH will be 12.6. And some change because I needed some zeros in there or something. Okay, which makes complete sense. Our pH should be very high. We just overshot with 100 extra mils of base and we didn't need. So you are beyond pink. Because you're consuming it. Remember, when you're adding no, when, whatever you're whatever you have more of, the other one's being consumed. Okay. So in this case, my, all of my acid has been consumed. So 10, 10 millimoles of the acid reacted with 10 millimoles of the base, and I had a leftover 10 millimoles. And then that leftover is basic, so you have. Yeah, it's leftover hydroxide. So now it's now you got more hydroxide, so it's basic. Okay. Oy vey, we never have enough time. Okay. Um, the points on the titration curve, that's stuff that you can read through, and that's kind of stuff that was covered in the um, little thing I had you watch. But there's still two problems I needed to get to, and we are going to run out of time. We only have like five minutes left. Okay. Um... I, let's see if I can do this last problem, okay? So I'm going to exercise six, so flip there real quick. Because y'all can read, thankfully. Some of you can't do, apparently, calculator math. Yeah, from how two days been going, I'm not Okay, yeah. So in this one, we have hydrogen cyanide gas, a powerful respiratory inhibitor, blah, blah, blah. We have a Ka value. If we have 50 milliliters of the HCN, 0.1 molar is titrated with 0.1 sodium hydroxide, what's calculate the pH of the solution? So here we have a weak acid, whoops, sorry. We got a weak acid plus a strong base, okay? So it wants to know after eight mils has been added, so that's when we're gonna use this instead of a rice table because we like this formula. But just like the AP exam, if you want to use this formula on the test, what do you have to do? Mm -hmm. Yay! Okay. So don't freak out here. I'm going to do it all at once. So it gave me my Ka of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. It's going to be big. So I'm going to calculate acid, right? So uh, you can do this one of two ways. You can go ahead and millimole it, or you can just do it all at once. So 50 milliliters times 0.10 molar. I am adding a base, so I'm going to subtract from my acid, because remember I'm adding a base. So 8 milliliters times 0.1 molar for the base, divided by my new volume, which is, Bargish, what's my new volume? <laughs> 50 plus 8, 58 milliliters. I know you were. I was just, I'm trying to hurry. Don't move. I'm going to finish this problem. Okay? So on the bottom, I have zero because I'd started with no, uh, no base. So I have zero plus the amount that I added. Eight. Well, I'm just showing you so you don't know. Yeah. Divided by 58. Okay? And when all that is said and done with the math, you get a hydrogen concentration of... 3.25 times 10, that's a 5, not an 8, my thing, times 10 to the negative 9. So to get the pH, I'm going to take the negative log of that number, and I should get 8.489. Okay. Halfway, what did I tell you? pH equal to the pKa, so negative log of 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10 is 9.2. And then uh, to get the equivalence point, oh, what time is it? Oh, 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 oh. Can I work that for you on Monday? Because I, I, I can't keep you all this late. Okay, remind me to work that for you on Monday. Or it might be Tuesday because of the lab.
Okay, we're going to resume finishing up this last problem. I'm going to put it on a new page because I can't fit it all on there. So let's remember that we're doing this at the equivalence point. Um, so let's go to the next page. Actually, let's do a new page here. So we're at the equivalence point, and if you're, we're still at exercise six, and if you, um, at the equivalence point, what we need is all of the acid to react. So we're going to need to do a quick little rice table. So we've got the CN minus reacting with the water, and then that's going to make the HCN, because we're neutralizing, plus the hydroxide. Okay, so originally we had 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCN. That means we have 5 millimoles. I'm going to write this down here. So we have 5 millimoles total um, of the hydrogen. So we're going to need 5 millimoles of the hydroxide to completely react. Okay, so that means with our 0.1 molar NaOH, that means we're going to need 50 mils needed to get 5, okay? So if we have 5 millimoles total of your NOAO, oh, excuse me, your CN minus, because that's what's going to make when it reacts, divided by the 100 milliliters, it's going to give us a concentration of 0.05. So that's how much cyanide... That's how much cyanide uh, molarity we have, okay? And then, of course, this is zero, and then this is zero, and this is zero. So then we're going to do minus x. We don't care about this because it's liquid water. Uh, and then plus x, and then plus x. So now, using our equilibrium, we can do kb is equal to x squared over 0.05 minus x, okay? So that's just figuring out what our hydroxide concentration is here. Okay, so in order to get our KB value, we're going to have to do our quick little KB is equal to KW over KA, and then that's going to be equal to X squared over 0 0.05, because we are going to neglect. We always try to neglect when possible. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's plug everything in. I'm going to do it in a different color. It's, um, yeah. So I have... Um, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10, which they gave us, is x squared over 0.05. So when I uh, collect my terms, I'm going to get x is equal to 8.98 times 10 to the negative 4, which is equal to my hydroxide concentration. And then I'm going to take my pOH, it's going to be a negative log, of the 8.98, and I'm running out of room, so I'll give you a second to catch up, and then I'm going to do it on another page, so I'll give you a second to catch up. Okay, next page, just because I am running out of room, so we said that the OH concentration was uh, 8.9, oops, sorry, 8.98 times 10 to the negative 4. So when we take the negative log of that, I'm being lazy, so I'm going to say negative log of that, we get our pOH is 3.047, so that our pH ends up being 14 minus that, and we get 10.953, which makes sense because we just titrated a weak acid with a strong base. All right, so let's do the last two problems and finish off these notes. They feel like they've taken forever for us to get through. Uh, exercise, whoa, what happened to exercise seven? There it is. Uh, use table 15.8 to decide which indicator would be best uh, to use in the titration of ammonia with hydro hydrochloric acid. Uh, when we're using, first of all, table 15.8 is in your book. It's not in the notes. But when you're choosing an indicator, you want to choose an indicator with a Ka uh, near that of the acid that you're titrating with, okay? So in this case, uh, we're going to have a weak acid, I'm sorry, strong acid with a weak base. So we're going to ex expect our equivalence point to be less than 7. So you want to find an indicator that's going to change in that range. In this case, that table is going to be... Uh, we're going to find that methyl red would be, the, would be the best one, okay? So that's just, you have to have a table to be able to do that, so you have to look that in your book. 
And then last week we have brome thymol blue has a Ka value of one times ten to the negative seven. Um, so that means its pH at equivalence point would be seven. And it's yellow in its uh, weak acid form and blue in its conjugate base form. Uh, suppose we put a few drops of this indicator in a strongly acidic solution. Um, if the solution is in titrated with sodium hydroxide, at what pH will the indica indicator color change be visible? This is last year's acid-based titration lab where we tried to uh, remember it's actually green at the sweet spot of the endpoint, and we were trying to get to green and not overshoot to yellow. So we're going to do um, our value for the hydro. Oops, sorry. Value for hydrogen, and so we're going to have our Ka is one times ten to the negative seven. Uh, is what did I do here? Hold pause. Okay, I apologize very much about that interruption. Um, I was trying to do that while class is going on, and so I decided to just stop and wait. So this last question is about uh, brome thymol blue. It tells you its Ka value of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, and it tells you that it's yellow in its weak acid form, because remember indicators are weak acids. Um, let me write that, indicators are weak acids. Um, and then it's blue in its ion, uh, anion form. Uh, suppose you put a few drops in a strongly acidic solution. If it was then titrated with NaOH, at what pH would the indicator change first be visible? Okay, and if you remember from last year when we did our titration, brome thymol blue, the actual best uh, when you get to the end point is that green that we tried to get in class. Some of you got it, some of you overshot to yellow. But what you need to know for this is the um, pKa um, is what we're going to be looking for. Okay, so an indicator uh, is useful or where the pH range is. Uh, indicator is useful at your pKa of plus or minus 1. Okay, so if we were to take the pKa, we would take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7, uh, so that would be 7, so our plus or minus 1 would be a pH of 6 is where we would first see um, that first color change be visible. And then, of course, the usefulness would be between 6 and 8 is where we would use that indicator for. Okay, so that completes the last of the buffer notes, and I will see you in class.